everyone. Today, me and another GIS folk is going to practice how to answer what is GIS to someone outside of this industry. Thank you for tuning in to Ask Alice Anything, where we explore stories about GIS that the general public can relate to. GIS can be a very difficult, complex concept to explain. So we thought we're going to break it down by profession so that this way, when you're having a conversation with someone, you can use these as an example. Let's welcome my friend, Bruce. Well, first of all, Bruce, what is that nice background you have? Where, where are you? Hey, uh, hi, Alice. It's good to see you again. Hi. I'm glad that we could get good on this call. Yeah, yes. you probably know. You probably know the people on uh, LinkedIn, the friends on LinkedIn, probably know me by my gray beard. I, I kind of go affectionately by the gray beard. That's because I'm a little older than most people in the industry, I think. But, uh, <laughs> but I, ha I really enjoy uh, doing things on LinkedIn. So thanks for inviting me to talk to you today. You might know that I live in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. That's one of the one of the big battles of the American Civil War. And we lived here for 26 years. It's a, it's a beautiful place. So every time I have an opportunity just to show some of the, the background, I like to do that. Um, today, I'm, I'm sitting in front of this monument, this beautiful monument that is the, it's called the, the Monument for the Irish Brigade. And there's a big cross and there's a wolfhound sitting at the base of the cross. And it signifies all of those men who didn't come home from the war, you know, leaving, leaving their families and their dogs by the hearth. Anyway, it's one of my favorite monuments oh. in the battlefield. So. I just thought I would come out here today and make it give it a little more interesting visual appeal. No, I love it. All right. Good. So, so we want which profession you want to start first? So I'll I will be, so I will be the GIS professional, and you can be the you can pick a profession. Okay. All right. So let's just say we met at a friend's barbecue. Uh, I lived down the house in a split level ranch house, and uh, I said, "Hey." Uh, um, you don't know me, but I'm, I'm a car mechanic. I'm an automobile mechanic. So I'd say to you, Alice, I, what do you do? Well, I work for a GIS company. Say, so, oh, you mean those things like I have in my car? So GPS is actually part of GIS. So GPS is the hardware part, and GIS the whole uh, concept of hardware and software and the people that's involved to make decisions on different things. So, for example, you are a car mechanic, right? Yes. So let's say you want to open up another store, another shop. GIS can help you figure out what be the best neighborhood for you to open up a shop to give you the demographics information, uh, the income and the, uh, the household so that it will be the most beneficial for you. Oh, you mean so if I if I wanted to know if I if I was in a high income area would that have the same kind of cars that maybe I like to work on, you know, we could come across that kind of information and they could put it on a map. Yeah. And then I, I can yes. look for places to lease that are that are close to those people that I want to serve. Yes. You can narrow down oh, your search all. and where you can send send out, you know, whatever, send out a marketing materials for you can target very target uh, high end or low end, depends on where your time them where your, where your, your target audience is, right? So that that's what GIS can help you do. If you are a nurse, <laughs> of course there are male nurses nurses, I would say um, Okay, if you're a nurse, let me think. So, well, right now, because it was, you know, with a pandemic, that's actually easy to explain to a nurse that, you know, uh, I'm sure you being get involved with helping a lot of um, patients with COVID. And so through GIS, you can actually see uh, how uh, a spread will, will work or a contact spread. So if one patient is infected, you can trace the contact so that you know who are or who are also uh, being involved in? So it's easier to narrow down your search. It's easier to narrow down um, uh, narrow down the the people you need to contact. Uh, it gives you a, a lot better information than just ask a person who have you been in contact with, right? Uh, especially for the, if that person works in the office or things like that, and that they have certain th certain system and plans in place, you can easily track that. Yeah, that makes sense. I can see that. Yep. Alice and I met at a school function, and we have kids that go to the same school, and uh, yep. and I sell I sell uh, uh, stocks of uh, high end companies like Tesla, for example. And so uh, yep. I was explaining I was explaining that to Alice, and so I said, Alice, hey, what do you do for a living? Oh, I work for a GIS company. Uh, I'm working sales too, but I'm selling GIS software. 
Okay, I've heard of that, but I'm not sure I know what it is. Maybe you can help me out. Sure. Um, I'll put in something that uh, it's easier for you to understand since we're talking about our kids. So GIS helps you solve problems. And one of the concepts in GIS is called geofencing. So for example, uh, when you have a map, a school could be represented as a, a dot on a map, right? And then you can put right, right. A, a circle around it, let's say 500 meters within the schoolyard or the play yard, 500 meter radius, okay? So what geofencing does is that if a sex offender or pedophile enters into within the 500 meters radius of that school or play yard, the police or the right people will get a notification on their phone or their system. And so, so this way it tracks, it sends a notification so we know when, so, when the police knows when someone with the record enters to a space that we don't want. So that's what geofencing is. So this could apply for anything, not just for okay. things like, uh, uh, for pedophile. Well, let's say for example, you and I, we're friends, we're just driving in and uh, um, we're gonna go McDonald's, right? But on our way to McDonald's, we pass by Old Navy. And as I pass by Old Navy, like say 500 meters within a radius of Old Navy, Old Navy sends me a notification. Hey, Alice, remember that you bought this last month that we have a new stock of this? Come in for 20% off? I'll be like, oh, because I'm driving into that radius again, the 500 radius. So that's also geofencing. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Oh, maybe you're not going to go, but it's 20% off. Oh, Bruce, let's stop. I just can make one quick stop. Let me grab that shirt all I want. So and so, geofencing is a is part of GIS, right? Yes, it's one concept of GIS. I find that's very easy to explain to people outside of the industry. But GIS can apply to everything. It helps solve any problems that you you want to you want to tackle. Oh, okay. So similar problems that have to do with where things are and where you are can be solved using GIS. Correct. It's location. Based. Very everything good. has a location. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. So construction. Let's say you run a bit in your house. Okay. Maybe, let's say you run a bit in your house and um, and we need to find, and then something happened in your basement, because this is, that should happen to me. <laughs> something happened okay. in my house and, and um, there's a pipe, my pipe was leaking, so it was flooding my basement. Okay, so my contractor said, you have to contact the city to turn off the main, the, the main, the main word of all, from my street, then he can turn off my own little thing and, and replace the pipe, right? Because okay. until the city does that, there'll be water running through. Even if he turns mine off, it's replace it, right? They have to stop at the main valve, right? And then let the water run right. and exchange a new pipe, right? So, uh, so the example is that the person can come, the city folks can come, and they just have, you know, um, uh, they have information about all the water mains in the city. So it's the city to keep track of all the assets, right, within the city for the residents. We're talking about right. manholes, right. water mains, park benches, everything. They have information about everything. And in order for them to see everything, to know everything, not just where it is, but also about when was the last maintained, when was the last inspected, you know, how old is it, when's the next inspection, all that information could be on different layers on a map with a dot. Right. Very good. That's really good. Okay. Let's, let's yeah. say, let's say for an example, Alice, that you, uh, you're a repair, you're a repair person for a yeah. large com commercial real estate company. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So, so what happens in that instance is that you get up in the morning and you pour yourself a cup of coffee. And then you yep. pull up your lap, you pull up your laptop and open your application and it opens up to a map. And that map is just a representation as a dot or dot, some sort of a dot that represents a work order for you. So all the red dots might be Alice's work orders for the day. And you got yourself a little white van out in front of the house and you know, you got to get in your yep. van and you got to drive around to all these different locations um, right. to, to, to repair these things. Well, if your company is mm -hmm. using GIS, it's not just a dot on that map, but there's also a lot of information about your assets in, on that map as well. So that when you go to your first location, you go down to uh, First Avenue and Vine Street to repair a leaky faucet at, at a big skyscraper, right? 
And when you do that, yeah. um, you, you're, you're thinking, oh, I've got to wait for parts because parts aren't going to get here for another half hour. So mm -hmm. you look, while you're doing that, you open up your, your map a little bit wider to see if there are any maintenance issues that are going to have to be done in that building over the next month and a half or two months that maybe you could take this half hour and you could knock a couple of those maintenance issues off of the list while you're waiting for your parts to come to fix the leaky faucet. Now, if that were just a dot mm -hmm. on the map, all you'd know is you have a leaky faucet to repair. But since it's GIS, right. you have a lot, a lot of other information that you can dig into and you can say, oh, I can do these other things that will save my company time mm -hmm. and money. At the same time, I'm here waiting for my parts to come so I can fix my leaky faucet. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I like that. I like that one. And you have, you know, you have people in the background, right? <laughs> I do. I wish I could. I wish I could control the environment, but I don't. I but you know what? Um, <laughs> that reminds me of another example that we can use: um, hiking. Okay. okay. So, uh, uh, so for example, because of COVID, nobody can really fly, right? So we're we're all just, you know, finding things locally that we can do within driving distance. Okay. So within driving distance, a lot I'm sure people are on hike trails, right? Uh, and so there are organizations uh, that are, are trail organizations who, let's say, they manage the trails because they have to maintain it to make sure the you know, roads, like the path, if any trees need to be cleared or any dead animals or whatever. And also they, they want to be able to, um, you know, allow the, um, the hikers to, to help out if they see something. So what they could do is if they could okay. publish out a wet map on their, uh, and put it on the QR code and print it on the big board. And all, all people have to do is click on that or scan that QR code. It takes them up to this map and it's called a, you know, system problem reporter. It reports a problem, uh, uh, their preset big buttons. They could say, I saw an animal, uh, you know, or I saw garbage that's not cleaned or has too full or uh, some road condition needs to be prepared like bridges, chains broken, uh, or just things that that's not should not be normally on the path, right? Something someone is hurt. Well, obviously, if someone is hurt, you call nine one one, right? But you know, other right, things right. that's not uh, life <laughs> life threatening, <laughs> uh, <laughs> not life threatening sure. uh, things. Right. Uh, you know that you can report, uh, or, or or there's a big dip that's too dangerous for people. You know, you want to report that. So that and people, all the hikers can all they have to do is select it and. And then the map will show exactly where they are because your their phone will have a GPS system. It will it would their phone will automatically show them when they're on this map where they are, right? And they can yeah. report it, or not. If they choose not to be, you know, they can just say no, around this area. They can put a description, or they can put a dot on the map. It's up to them, right? Because um, right. some people may turn off their GPS unit. Um, I mean, sorry, GPS enablement on their phone, right? Right. That reminds me of another example, Alice. We built an application for the city of New York that uh, it, there's two applications. One is a, is a citizen facing application that allows them to report down tree limbs. And the other, and the, the other application is, an, is a work order application that has the crews to deal with down, down tree limbs, right? So if you're walking through Central Park, you can pull up the Natural Areas Conservancy app and you can pull it up. And it gives you a place to report down tree limbs after a storm. Mm -hmm. So you can stop, take a picture of it, pu push a button on your phone that gives it a, a, a location, a GPS location. And then that, that picture and that location are sent back to the parks department through the, through the application. And then there's a work order generated to go and fix that, to um, clean up that down tree limb in Central Park. So it's this fully integrated, like between it uses GPS locations, it uses right. the, 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 the ability to send photos uh, and upload photos into the application. And it also generates work orders on the back end so that the people, the crews that are going to do the work, they also have all that stuff show up on a map and they're able to, uh, to take action based on where they are and what time they have in their day. Isn't that cool? No, that's good. That's really good. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah. I think I think when when we talk about GIS, it's really about t having a conversation with a person. Like sure. try to avoid, right? Try to avoid, uh, you know, defining it or whatever. Ask them, you know, what do they do? 
you know, ask them questions so that it, it kind of, you know, engage them in the conversation so that it's easier for you to continue that conversation. You know, um, and Alice, I agree. One way, to, one way to continue a conversation is to bring in something that they know about. For example, like a, a yes. lot of times when I'm talking to somebody about, about um, GIS, I'm, I'll say, well, you know how when you, when you want to use the Uber app, you pull up the Uber app and there's a map in yeah. front of you, right? And that right. map, um, that map in front of you shows the location where your location and then you put in, you know, in the search bar, you put in where you want to go and then it shows you all the people who are all the cars that are available to fulfill your need to take you to that location. And I've often said, I've said many times, you know, if, if the first thing that you saw when you pull up the Uber app was just a list of potential locations and no map, I'll bet, I'll bet that wouldn't uh. be very popular, right? But the idea right. is that there's a map in front of them and you can see where they are. That all, that all helps them to know how, the power of what a map can do for them in real life, right? So then you say, okay, That's well, right. maybe, maybe you can think of a, an aspect of your job or of your life that if you had a map to start with, that that might make your life easier. And then you can kind of move into, okay, well, what, kind of, what do you do? And where, where would location matter mm. to you? Where would, where would the location of your customers or the location of your the supplies that you use or the location of the people who serve you, where would that matter to right. you? And that's another way yes. that you can start that conversation. Yeah. Trying yeah. to think about other, yeah. other, other, other ways that we've, I've had that conversation before. Oh, oh, you know, like when you're, when you're driving around, you know, your example about, uh, about oh, 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 Navy. Old Navy. Yeah. Old Navy. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You see, you're driving by Old Navy. Well, I don't know how many times in my lifetime, you know, I've been I've yeah. been somewhere, and I said, "Geez, I want to find out where where a certain store is, McDonald's or Banana Republic or Gap is near me, right?" That's right. not that's not GIS, but it's the power of a map, right? And so then, right. then that's you just can go routing. From there. You just that's right. right. That's, that's just routing. That's, that's part power. of GIS. Right. That's the power of location, right? And then you can once right. you get to what once you get get to location. Then you can then you can start talking about the power of location relating to how they do their job or what they do in everyday life, and how knowing knowing the location of certain parts of that can be can be used to benefit them. So I, lots of times yeah. you don't want to get the idea of a map confused, but at the same time you want to be able to say, okay, well you rely on on knowing where something is. Well, businesses and other enterprises rely on knowing where something else is something is as well but they also like to use that as part of an uh a decision making um metro uh decision ma decision making workflow or some sort that helps them to make a good decision about things i have a joke for you i have a joke for you ready all right I came up you. with myself and I, and I and i need to i need to perfect it so i'm gonna sh i'm gonna this only works for gis professions because other people won't get the joke Okay, but then you have so what to explain do, it so everybody else can, I will. Else can get it. Okay. I will. Go ahead. So what do uh, uh, cavemen and modern men have in common? Cavemen and modern men. Well, some women would say... Or, or a cave woman. I'm sorry. I meant, I meant just... Sorry. Cave human or <laughs> modern human. When I say men, I mean I, I'm including the human beings. Uh. Sorry. Let me be very precise uh, with that. Well, good, good, good. Because I, like I said, my wife would would say it's not much different. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. So let's see. The answer cave, to that is cave, actually yeah, a, yeah, go ahead. a cave person. A cave person and a modern person. They both like to eat. There I don't go. know what what do they have in common. GIS. GIS. How's that? Because. Let's say in the olden age, we're, we're two cavemen. I'm going to tell you where the next food is. You, I'm going to tell you this is a rock, right? I'm going to draw a picture for you, right? This is a yep. rock, and then you make sure you see a bear. You go around that bear, there's that tree that looks like this, and there's food there, and there's a lake, and you cross this lake, and there may be food there. So it started drawing pictures, or I can draw pictures on the, on the sand or on the ground, right, with sticks and mud, right, to show you where I want, where the, the, la the next time I find food, same as today. How do we find food? There's Fedora, you know, to find to take you find food to take that map driven, very location driven. Uh, 
uh, you know, Uber to take you to places from what way to be, right? And Amazon Prime, oh my God, do you have any idea that the drivers <laughs> for Amazon Prime uses GPS, or GIS, to prioritize which one to deliver first? If you just show them a map, sure, I showed them the route, but it doesn't prioritize for them. Because it, it may not give you the right road conditions or constructions or closures or something that you may not know on a regular map, right? But GIS can help you do that. So I, I think what you're telling me, Alice, is that those cave drawings that we see, cave drawings yes. are just prehistoric GIS. Yes. Essentially. Are the, the cartographers are the second oldest profession in the world. That's another joke. Okay. <laughs> well, that's good. Those are good. So hopefully you have learned some good examples that you can use to have a conversation with your friends uh, and family um, if you are the GIS professional. So have fun. We'll see you next time.